Well, hey there guys, we are going to do a quick little video on titration techniques, kind of the pitfalls that students run into and what to watch out for. Uh, especially in the general chemistry here, we like to do back titrations, which I think uh, allow you to go a bit faster and you don't have to be so paranoid about getting past that endpoint. We're going to go past that endpoint on purpose. Right? Hopefully you know what an equivalence point and an endpoint are, right? That's important. So equivalence point is when your acid and base neutralize each other. So we'll always have a base. Usually that's going to be like sodium hydroxide or something like that. And we'll typically have a back titrant, some kind of acid. Could be any kind of acid. And then we'll have another acid in here. Maybe this is an unknown acid. We don't know its concentration. So for a back titrant, I like to put A before B. Let's say I know the concentration of this. And let's say the base, I know the concentration of that. I like to keep the bottles, right? So I know this is my base. I know this is my acid. I get confused. I do A before B. So hopefully you don't get confused like I do. And then we'll have some known volume of an unknown acid. We could switch it all. We could put a base here and an acid here and another base there. But typically we're titrating an acid. So I have a known volume of acid. However, you got that acid in there is an important. Maybe it was a solid that you weighed and dissolved up. Uh, maybe it was uh, measured from a burette, graduated cylinder, not as accurate as a burette usually. Uh, and we give it some volume in there. Now, we know that the acid here is clear and colorless. And the base is clear and colorless. Everything's clear and colorless. So how do we ever know that the acid and the base neutralize each other? That's called the equivalence point. You have equivalent amounts of both. That's why we add an indicator, lots of different kinds of indicators. So typically, you're going to want to add uh, two or three drops. So let's put in two drops there. I hope three came out. I wouldn't go more than four because that's an acid, a weak acid itself. So a couple drops. Obviously, the color of phenolphthalein in acidic solution is colorless. So we're going to be looking for, we're going to be adding our base until this changes color. That's the end point when the indicator changes color. It indicates where the equivalence point is. And hopefully the indicator has been chosen to match when the equivalence point is. We'll do that in second semester of general chemistry, learn how to predict that. Typically in introductory chemistry, you don't have a back titrate. You just go real slow and try to not go past that end point and get the faintest pink color possible. That builds up paranoia. <laughs> it's okay for introductory high school chemistry. Here, I'm just gonna go boom, go as fast as I can, turn it, that, uh, that pink color, and then I'm going to add some more acid and turn it colorless again and back titrate it. And then come back and I'll go back and forth from the base to the acid, the base to the back titrant acid, getting a fainter shade of pink each time until I can literally get maybe a half to a quarter of a drop tapped off into here and get the faintest pink color possible. Whew. You can't screw up, right? With back titrations, you can't screw up. You can, If you don't like your color, you can just back titrate, turn it colorless and add some more base. It's a wonderful method there. So uh, usually the base will be our titrant uh, and the acid are uh, back titrant. Not always, but typically. These have already been conditioned, so I'm just reading through the steps here. I've already conditioned these four times, made sure there's no bubbles at the tips here, right? So you always want to take a look here and go, okay, I got no bubbles or air gaps above the bead in my morburette, no bubbles below, and I'm nice and flush at the tip. See that? There's no air gap at the tip. If there is an air gap at the tip, what you do is you just get a waste beaker and just get a little drop hanging off, tap it off in the waste beaker, and you're good to go. And usually I'll dry that off, all right, just in case. I don't want any drops of liquid on the outside, so I'll just make sure it's dropped. So when you pour it in, sometimes you spill a little bit. Make sure it's dry on the outside. So we're nice and flush at the tip for both of those. I always do that before I record my initial burette reading there. So we're not going through burette techniques. I'm assuming you've already watched that video and used burettes before. Um, and again, get your acid in here. If it's a solid, dissolve it up. Add the indicator. If it's a solution, just add the known volume, add the indicator, and you're good. So if you're ever titrating, adding base, and you're getting down towards the 50 line here, stop and add two drops of indicator. It'll probably turn really pink and then back titrate because you can't go below this 50 line because there's no lines there. You couldn't read a volume. So once you go, if you get down here, stop. If you can't figure out what you're doing, ask your instructor. <laughs> so we're going to add this base at the maximum drainage rate of about half a milliliter per second and purposely turn it pink. That seems kind of uh, counterintuitive versus what we probably learned in high school in introductory chemistry. I'm going to get it in as, you know, the fastest possible rate I can within acceptable limits and purposely go past it. So I, I'm not all anxious about it. Um, 
And then every time you pull this out, you'll get little droplets up on the inside neck sometimes. And a lot of times I'll tap one off. You always want to spray that down with DI water. That's really, really important, right? So let's do that real quick. Let me raise this up a little bit. Let's add the base. And then I'm going to swirl this. I'm a, I'm a righty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swirl with my right. If I try to swirl with my left hand, it's all over the place, right? It's a joke. So I'm going to dispense with my left hand, and I'm going to add it with my right hand. So let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here so you can see the, the pink colors start to form as we're doing this. So now I'm adding. So I added my indicator. And I've got a known volume or mass of acid that's in here. And again, I'm going at that half mil per second maximum drain rate, swirling as I go. And sooner or later, now with phenophylline, obviously it turns pink at basic solution. If you're using different indicators, you might get different colors. But swirl it, swirl it, and you start to see that pink forming. I'm not going to slow down at all. I am not trying to hit the faintest pink color. Can you see the pink forming and then going away? I'm just going to add until that stays pink. Again, not trying to hit the faintest endpoint possible. We want to get the faintest pink color we possibly can, but not on the first run. We're going to back titrate it. This will save you a tremendous amount of time and a tremendous amount of anxiety because you can't screw it up. Okay, see how that pink is, is lasting a little longer? See, if I stop, right, so I'm adding even more. I'm way past the end point right now. I got a drop hanging off, so I'm going to tap that drop off on the inside neck of the flask. And what I'm going to do is I got to get that droplet down there. So I'm going to spray. Adding water does not change the moles of acid or base. So that's way too pink, obviously. If you can hold it up and see it's pink, it's too pink. All right? So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to come over to my back titrate now. And I'm going to add that just at a, at a quick drop rate until this turns colorless. And then I know I've done one back titration. I'm probably within three, four, five drops of it. Then I'll add a drop at a time till it turns pink. Add one drop till it's colorless. Do a half drop. Try to, I try to get that end point, that color change, due to one half of a drop where I just get that drop and it's hanging off the end and I just tap it off on the inside and spray it down. So let's head over to the back titrant here. And you'll see, I'll just, I'll just add that. And I've recorded all the initial volumes. So I'm just adding this. Now watch the color fade. Boop, gone. I'm going to tap that drop off. Every time you take it away from the more beer, right, tap off the drop and then spray that down. We're pretty close, right? I'd say we're very, very close. So I'm going to come over to the base. Now I'm just going to add one drop at a time. I'll zoom in again here. So I'm just going to add one drop and swirl it. I'm just going one drop at a time. I don't know if you can see. I normally don't have the burette outside of the flask. I have it inside the flask, but I want you to see I'm just going one drop at a time here. And I want to get it to where one drop turns this pink. I'm not worried about hitting the end point here. Okay, so I'm going to tap that off. And this has to persist. I want the faintest pink color that persists for 30 seconds. Now, if you can see it's pink just by holding it up, it's too pink. Now, that may fade away. I want to get it to the point where I can't really tell it's pink holding it up. I need to have a colorless reference. I like to have tap water with me. I like to have a colorless reference where I'll hold the two up together and then put a white background where I can't see the pink color and then I can't. See, I can't see it there, so that's not enough. Make sure you don't start titrating your tap water. <laughs> I know in introductory chemistry, we use a pH chart with a little, you know, at this pH, it's this color pink, and you try to match the pink color. Whatever works for you, but don't try to just look at it because you can play mind games with yourself. All right, so I'm going to add another drop. Woo, that was one drop, guys. <laughs> Spray that down. So would you agree? I'm pretty close. That's the color change from one drop. It's pretty crazy. All right, let's head over here. Let's add one drop of our back titrate. Boop. and tap that off so back to colorless we are very very close we're less than a drop away we've done two back titrations that's it and if i'm not talking i'm doing this faster right so it usually goes faster than this what i'm going to do is i'm going to let's zoom in i'm going to get about a half of a drop i'm just going to get a little half a drop hanging off oh that was more than half a drop unfortunately that was about three quarters of a drop tap it off on the inside 
spray it down. I'll probably have to back titrate again. Yeah, that was, it's pretty faint, but I can still see it's pink. So let's add another drop of the back titrate. Get that color again. So that would be my third, usually within three back titrations, sometimes four. I will nail this. Let's see if we can get even closer here. So I'm just going to get this tiny, tiny partial drop. There's just a little partial drop hanging off there. Can you see that partial drop? I'm going to tap that off on the inside neck of the flask. I'm going to spray that partial drop down. And it's going to have this little off shade of pink. I don't know if that is enough. Nope, I don't see it. Let's do another partial drop. Just a little bit of a drop there. Tap that off. I spend most of my time within a drop, probably, of the end point. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, that's fairly faint. Let's see if it persists. Nope, I still don't see it. All right, we're very close. Don't get in a hurry and just start adding major, major drops, right? So when you're really close, you want to have some patience there. Can you see the offshoot of pink? So this is my tap water right there. So hopefully you can see that faint. You can't really tell like this, but you're like, oh, there's a real faint shade of pink right there. All right, it's always nice to have the white background. So that's the back... That's the faintest pink color that you're looking to hit. And now make sure you're flush at the tips, and then you measure your final burette readings. And if you know the uh, volume and concentration of your base, you know the volume and concentration of your back titrant, and the volume of the original acid you put in there, you can calculate the concentration of the unknown acid and other assorted things, right? So just kind of follow through the steps there. I just kind of walked you through it. And when you're all done, you refill the burette back up. The back titrant, you usually don't use more than a milliliter or two. So I only fill it up maybe 15 milliliters. So it's not nearly as full. I have it only filled up to here. Whereas the base, you got to fill up. The titrant, you have to fill all the way back up close to the top. Doesn't have to be 0, 0.00. Just get it up there. Um, and this, the calculations may be a little trickier, but this technique, you're never worried about screwing it up. You never have to repeat the experiment. If you don't like your pink color, just back titrate some more. Piece of cake, guys. You got it.